In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, um, Ellie the 2CV suffers gremlins d'électrique, as they say in France. Well, it's a beautiful day in paradise, so the fox is currently basking um, in the sunshine. Uh, it had a wash yesterday, and um, now it needs to dry out. It's really, really windy though, so it's good drying weather, but Tuck is hiding in the garage because this really is not a day for driving an Invercar. Um, Ellie has a flat battery again, so there must be a parasitic drain. Um, I'm gonna uh, jump start her in a minute and take her for a drive, get the battery charged up, and then later on, we will investigate what's wrong. The Matiz, actually working. The Mazda is still sat here, entirely broken. The Rover is absent. Uh, it failed the MOT, not catastrophically, and uh, I can't say any of the items were a massive surprise, to be honest, but um, yeah, it's not, not, not a great time on the fleet. Uh, let's see if we can get the 2CV running. We have the iClever jump pack um, connected up. Um, just letting it have a few seconds. I've had to hit boost. There we go, we've got an indicator light, we've got the choke set. Oh yeah, I've just remembered the fuel gauge is currently under reading, so that's about half a tank. Um, I think I'll probably need to sort that out before I go to Croatia. Um, annoyingly, of course, we dropped the tank when we replaced the rear brake pipe. Um, but running the tank down so it's nice and light to drop out, yeah, that's um, a tricky one. Um, because um, I don't know, really know when she's empty, so that's going to require some bravery. But um, running very sweetly, not sounding too tappy today. So, well done, Ellie. Um, maybe I'll take this with me to the um, shops just in case. And we're back. Um, seems to be running nicely. Um, look, we're getting on for um, 212,000 miles. Um, so I think a cup of tea, a bit of shopping packing, and then we'll explore what's going on. Okay, so we've got the multimeter um, set to 200 milliamps. Um, I'm into these ports here, the COM and the, um, the other one. I don't really understand. Who's that messaging me? Oh, someone's enjoying my Viva video. And um, if I connect the negative battery terminal, or, or bridge it rather with the multimeter. You need a click of that relay, it's one of the headlamp relays. Something is definitely drawing some amps. And um, we'll um, first of all see if we can remove some fuses and see if that makes it go away or not. So don't ask me what these fuses do, we shall worry about that if we get a difference. Nope, so that one's okay. So we've got systematically go through and pull each of these out. I've got a few direct feeds here. I'm suspicious of these, but first of all, we'll go through the fuse box because that's the proper way of doing it. Uh, very difficult to do this on your own. No, still something drawing away merrily there. So that one can go back. Yeah, I think we're gonna end up eliminating this fuse box from our inquiries. Unfortunately, there's some very simple fuse holders on these lamps. Uh, uh, the headlamp relays, so um, that will make life easier. Yeah, so there we go. It's nothing that goes through the main fuse box. So um, let's um, take one of these fuses out. Oh, let me just put you down for a moment. Right, so one of my headlamp relays, there's one for dip and main beam, has been removed. Oh, and look at that. There we go, so that is our problem. It must be a duff relay. I mean, fitting headlamp relays is all well and good, and um, it's something I've um, had to do to take the lo load off the, um, uh, the, the headlamp switch in particular. But this is far from the first time I've had an issue. Um, so if I put that back in, I think this is the one, I don't think you should hear it clicking when the power comes back on, I think. That helps indicate that that's probably the problem. Yeah, there you are. Drawing even more now, in fact. 
So that is uh, that was that one, wasn't it? Which goes to this relay. So I'll have to get another one of those relays, I think. For the time being, I'm going to go for um, leaving the battery terminal off. I have actually bought a switch so I can switch it because that stops it being an issue. And it's also a slight anti-theft um, device. Um, maybe I should get that fitted. Right, um, I've removed the fuse and um, I no longer have main beam. So it was the main beam circuit and that could well be related to um, this dodgy headlamp switch because um, yeah, I, I think that's probably what's upset the relay. Um, because it, I mean, it really smells on um, high beam. So it's not getting a clean, consistent voltage, I don't think. So, um, yeah, I need to get myself a new light switch. So I've sort of got a bodgin fix. Until I get a headlamp switch, um, I've just got no main beam, um, which at least has stopped the battery draining unexpectedly. So now we're moving on to the fuel gauge. Um, if I go around the back here. The um, fuel gauge, um, even with the ignition on, I've got the coil disconnected so I don't burn it out, um, is showing somewhat less than it should. Um, I reckon there's probably a good quarter of a tank in there, if not more. Um, so one thing we can do is this connection here, which goes down to the fuel tank. So that is the feed to the gauge. And I have a handy earth point here. This one goes direct to the battery. You don't have to do that. But um, if I can just move that closer, just trying to make it as easy as possible to do one handed uh, is always the challenge. So I can connect that there and then the fuel gauge responds thusly, it goes to full. So I at least know if I can make a good connection, but the fuel gauge is working. So the problem isn't there. And um, I'm guessing the problem probably isn't here either. I think that's probably a good connection I've got going on there. So um, let's have a quick crawl underneath. I've got her up on ramps um, just to give me a bit more working room. You can just about get under a 2CV even without that. Uh, so we've got an earth point here. I've just been trying to clean that up. Um, I might just um, get my um, makeshift HT lead, HT lead, jump lead, and um, just connect that to that. And just make sure that that is actually a good point because otherwise I'm going to have to drop oh, yeah. interesting noise uh, drop the fuel tank which is not much fun especially as it has a completely unknown amount of fuel in it I think it's fairly low but it might not be so chances are we disturb something when we drop the fuel tank to do the rear brake pipe replacement um, so um, yeah further bad marks to me for not sorting all that out while the body was off. Um, there you go, that's me. So um, yeah, let's see if we can sort that out. Aha, we might be getting somewhere. I might have less fuel than I thought. If I disconnect this cable, there we go. So I've now made an earth with my um, jump lead and uh, I'm just trying to do the connection with my other hand, which is not easy. It's kind of designed more for um, two-handed um, application, but um, there, it, there it goes. So I might have less fuel than I thought, but it looks like at least I haven't got to drop the tank. All I've got to do is clean that earth up and make sure it is proper. Because if you can't see a good earth, then the gauge will not read accurately. So that's kind of a result, I think. Right, I've cleaned this connection up and added washers. It was missing washers, so to the washers will help get a better contact on things. Let's see if I can get out without bashing my head on the fog light. There we go, success. Um, let's go and see what we've got going on with the gauge. Uh, disappointment. Now it's kind of moving a bit. Might need another go at that, I think. Let's just connect the um, lead up again. Uh, it's got all gone a bit disrespected Evo, really, hasn't it? If you're watching Mighty Car Mod Boys. Uh, oh! Let's see if that's made a difference. Oh, 
Okay, not very much. Maybe I've just got not very much fuel in the tank. Hmm. It might just be me genuinely having very little fuel because um, if I disconnect it, it looks different from over here, doesn't it? Because of the angles. So um, I think the best thing to do is go and put some fuel in. gauge is certainly nudging the bottom of the um, scale now in a way it wasn't before so we'll go and put some fuel in see what happens in the meantime bit of admin don't forget you can buy hubnut merchandise at hubnut.org uh, go and head to the shop um, it's a, a great way of supporting us and it uh, um, gets you some nice merchandise so that's all good we try and do it all ourselves to keep the cost low for you so t-shirts are only 10 pounds um, polo shirts are a bit more at 15 and hoodies cost quite a lot to um, make so they're 30 pounds each but we've got stickers mugs a um, few beanie hats we might have to get another order of those uh, although it's not really the season for beanie hats anymore so maybe we won't but um, yeah all that good stuff uh, the other thing I should say is that um, I have a patreon account now uh, I kind of stayed up oh, that door wasn't shut properly uh, I've kind of stayed off Patreon uh, because, um, well, I just didn't really feel the need. But that's my friend Hester there on the kiosk. Um, but so many people have said, oh, you must, but I've finally given in and have one. But what I will say is that um, I'm never going to hide my content behind a paywall, not even for a one day delay. So um, don't worry if you haven't given anything. Uh, it is not compulsory, it's just an option for those who do want to support Hubner. And think of it like a busker, all I'm doing is putting a few different hats down. And um, you can either chuck a few quid in the hat, or not. It's fine, the music will go on. And so will the videos about terrible cars. The thing I've tried to do differently on Patreon is give you a chance to directly support your favourite car on the fleet. Whether it's Ellie the 2CV, Tuck the Invercar, uh, Foxan, or even the Matiz. Um, they are the key four vehicles on the um, Hubnut fleet at the moment. Uh, you can support the Rover as well, and um, I'm kind of hopeful that even when that is no longer my car, uh, it can still be supported and um, it will go on. Uh, that's my hope. We'll see if that manages to happen. Um, Morgan there um, so yeah something, something different go and have a look um, there'll be a link in the description below along with links to my sponsor is that door shut properly yes that's just window rattling yeah I mean this sort of fiddling is um, something you kind of get a bit used to with old cars there's always something I mean poor Ellie bless her she's just hit 212,000 miles of course she's been stripped to pieces a couple of times in that um, long uh, ownership of 19 years now this summer so um, yeah I don't blame her for the odd little foible so she, she always wants to make sure the other cars aren't absorbing all of my time so that can be an issue but yes th thank you ever so much for your continued support um, 30,000 subscribers now I find that a bit hard to believe and um, yeah Hubnut really is going places in fact this morning I booked my um, flight to New Zealand uh, so on the 24th of October 2019 I will be landing in New Zealand after um, a 33 hour journey that's gonna um, yeah with no cars involved oh 
not sure how I'm going to cope with that. But don't worry, the videos will keep coming. Uh, I'm already planning test drives in New Zealand and um, hopefully Australia as well. I haven't planned that bit yet. I haven't planned the New Zealand bit yet. I'm kind of told the idea of buying an old car and um, touring New Zealand. And um, it could be great fun. Uh, but yeah, it'll certainly all be documented in videos. I'm looking at different options so I can sort of vlog my way around the world. Um, so the scope may change a bit. Uh, it might, might be a bit more of a travel log going forward, but it'll still be the same old hub nut. So um, yeah, don't you worry. It's exciting times ahead. I'm really looking forward to it. Still lots more content to come as well. I've still got to get the fox on the road. Uh, Ellie is still going to go to Croatia and back. That's got to happen before we depart. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I'm taking talk back to Funders Lee in Essex next month. Um, exploring a few options to try and have a few different meetups around the country and indeed around the world. Uh, it looks like we're going to be able to have a gathering in the Netherlands. We're working on um, that at the moment as well. There is, yeah, so much going on. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing some of you wherever I pop up at the time. Uh, so I shall say, uh, actually, no, I won't say thank you for watching yet. Uh, let's have a bit of a false ending again, just like Mighty Car Mods recently. Um, yeah, uh, let's, let's go and see where the fuel gauge goes up first. We're almost there. The fuel gauge at its current position, it, it's now hovering about slightly below empty. It does that anyway. Um, when it gets to that stage, I generally know I've got about 20 miles to go. So I would estimate that I will get um, 22 litres of fuel in. Let's see if that gauge is now accurate. What a lovely day. Again. Close, we got just over 21 litres in. Um, but moment of truth? Yes. I mean, that's still under reading somewhat. Um, the full mark should be up there. But yeah, that's a lot more believable. Um, I think there might still be work to do with that earth. But, um, There we go, I think that's a reasonable conclusion, even though the gauge is trying to go further up. But, um, obviously losing a volt or two, somewhere between tank and um, gauge. Oh. So I'm just enjoying not being stuck behind a tourist. It's bank holiday weekend and the roads are um, horrific. Oh, gotta love a 2CV. Tires squealing. I will say these Michelin 125s do let you know when you're pushing on a bit. Oh, my fuse just fell onto my foot. I wonder what that was. probably stop hooning and say goodbye to you um, so that that is our conclusion and uh, I will say thank you very much for watching I won't tell you to so subscribe you can if you want and um, you can also visit the shop on our patreon page if you want but otherwise yeah thank you very much and I shall see you in a future video farewell